Good morning. This morning, uh, we're going to be, I'm going to be reading from uh, 1 John 2, 28 to 29, and then 1 John 3, 1 to 3, because they all flow together. And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has yet not appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Now, notice here, verse 29, it says, If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness <clears throat> has been born of him. And then in this uh, verse 3, it says, And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. So when it's talking about here the kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, this is not everybody who professes faith in Jesus Christ. It's not everybody who calls himself or herself a child of God. You know, uh, there are a lot of people, they just read this out of context. They probably just read the uh, verse, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, and then they just claim that God's love is so great, which it is, you know, that they would be called children of God, and they assume that they are God's children because somebody told them they were, uh, like uh, some of these um, <clears throat> uh, presentations of the gospel, which are not really the, uh, the gospel. Uh, and then they, they end it with, uh, if if you you meant that prayer, you know, then congratulations, you are now children of God. Um, but the prayer, at least at one time, did not even mention repentance. And even if it does now, sometimes repent, all it means is just to confess, you know, that that you are born as a sinner, and that you need a savior. Uh, but it's not really turning from your sin and turning to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So understand that if somebody says repent, that doesn't mean they're actually talking about, you know, biblical repentance. Uh, they just may be using it as a verbal confession saying, I, 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 I have sinned, you know, and I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. So that when I die one day, I'll go to heaven, you know, and that, but that's not, that may be part of the gospel, but that is not the fullness of the gospel. And, and, and therefore half truth is, is a lie, you know, especially if it's done willfully and deliberately. Um, so understand when this is saying that we are called children of God, uh, it's related to those of us who have been crucified with Christ and death to son, who've been raised with him to walk in newness of life in him, no longer as slaves to sin, but now as slaves to God and to his righteousness. It is those of us who have died with Christ to sin that we might live to him and to his righteousness. Does not mean we're perfect people. And does that mean everyone who is a chilled child of God is presently living for the Lord? You know, it is possible for true children of God to stray for a time. Uh, those letters in Revelation, you know, to the churches there, you know, uh, God, you know, four out of seven of them, you know, he tells them the good that they're doing, but then the things that he has against them that they need to repent of. Um, the church in Laodicea, he had nothing good to say about them, but he told them they had to repent. Uh, and only two out of the seven did he have, um, only positive things to say about them. So um, the point is that it, it is possible 
for true followers of Jesus Christ at some point in their lives to to walk away from that pure fellowship um, and, and need to be brought back, okay? Uh, so this is not saying that everybody who is a true child of God is living perfect lives, okay? But the scriptures do teach that if we make a profession of faith in Jesus Christ, but then we continue in deliberate and habitual sin, that we will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So uh, Jesus draws a line in the sand, so to speak, and uh, he lets us know, you know, up front, who are the ones who are truly his and who are the ones who are not truly his. And the book of First John really spells it out for us, you know, that if we claim that we're in fellowship with God, but we're still walking in sin, we're liars. If we claim to know God, but we are not walking in obedience to him, that we are liars, you know, and then this, this chapter is going to go into that even into more detail and um, it was just much stronger words too, you know. So uh, we can't just take First John 3, 1 to 2 and just apply it to anybody who says that they're, they're a child of God, okay? So we need to read things in the context, which is why I added in um, the last two verses of, of chapter 2 uh, so that we, we get the context here that they're just talking about uh, those who practice righteousness. Now, this is not not works-based salvation. This is not us in our flesh doing anything to earn or to deserve our own salvation. We are not called children of God because of what we did to earn or to deserve our own salvation. Uh, but we are children of when we are children of God. There will be evidence that we are truly His children by how how we act and by the things that we do. And that's why it says, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. And then further on down in, in all the previous two chapters that let us know that those who practice sin are not born of him. Okay, so that, that's where God draws the line in the sand, you know, and separates those who are, are truly his from those who are not truly his. Uh, but, is uh, it's the love of God for us that that we should be called children of God an awesome thing? Absolutely, because none of us deserved it. None of us earned it. We're all born sinners. We're all born into this world with sin natures. Now I understand we had no control over that, right? You know, but we do have control over how we live in the present. We have the control you know, uh, over whether or not we walk in righteousness or we walk in sin. Uh, so although we had no control over being born with sin natures, you know, we, we can choose, we can choose God or we can choose our sin. We can choose righteousness and holiness and godliness or we can choose sin. Um, but yes, it is awesome. That, that God would love us that much to call us children of God. But we are only called children of God if we truly are his children. And we are only his children by genuine God-given faith in him, which is crucified with Christ in death to sin and raised with Christ to walk in newness of life in him, no longer as slaves to sin, but as slaves to God and to his righteousness. And I know I'm repeating myself. But the Bible repeats itself all the time, you know, in some high that's necessary, right? Um, so we, we, that's important that we understand that and that we don't take this passage of Scripture out of context. Now, it says here, um, the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Now, I'm going to add something in here, not that I'm adding to the Scriptures, but when it says the world those are people who are worldly okay they're following the ways of the world many of them profess faith in jesus christ so when this says the world it doesn't mean just those who make no profession of faith in jesus christ it means those who are still living like the world who are part of that world who love the world you know which is what we're not supposed to do we're not supposed to prefer the world and and take pleasure in the world and long for the world. You know, we, we read that in uh, the the second chapter of First John. Um, 
because then the love of the Father is not in us. So we should not be surprised when those who profess faith in Jesus Christ also do not know us in, in a spiritual way. Uh, they do not accept us as co-equals with them. They don't accept us as um, their version of what Christians are because they consider us too weird, too radical, too out there, which is what we're supposed to be, right? Or we're, we're called to be separate. We're called to be different. That's what that's what holiness is. It's different. It's different from the world, you know, different from the the, the ways of, of of the ungodly, and so we should we should shine like lights. You know, we should. It should be obvious that that we're following Jesus Christ with our lives, and that we're not following the ways of the world. But when that happens, especially in today's culture, uh, Christian culture in America, we're we're going to be singled out. We're going to be ostracized. You know, we're going to be rejected. Uh, you know, people are going to overlook us. You know, because we're just a little too strange for them, <laughs> a little too different. You know, than what's in their comfort zone because. So much of the church today is, is so worldly that it's just commonplace to be worldly. And so if anybody is not worldly, then they're just odd, you know, to them. Uh, so it says, uh, beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be, uh, has, uh, or the reason, I'm going to back up, the reason they don't know us is they don't know him. They don't know Jesus in, in truth and in righteousness. They may know of him. They may um, know uh, about him. They may feel as though they know him, but if they're if they're not uh, practicing righteousness, but they're practicing sin, and and they're walking in the ways of the flesh and the world, and not in the ways of God, then according to the scriptures, they don't know him. You know, so they they may believe they know him, but then they don't know him, and because they don't really know him, because they're not walking according to his word, then they're not going to know us either, you know, when we're walking according to the word, and they're just going to think we're strange, you know. That's just the bottom line, you know. Uh, but that's okay, right? <laughs> uh, then it says, uh, we are God's children now. What will be has not yet appeared, but know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Oh, because we shall see him as he is, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Okay, so one one day Jesus is going to return uh, for his bride, uh, for his faithful ones, and not everybody who says Lord, Lord is going to enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones doing the will of God the Father who is in heaven. Um, which you can read Jesus' words in Matthew seven twenty one to twenty three. Um, so we need to understand that, that, um, when Jesus comes back, there's going to be a lot of people. He's going to say, I never knew you depart from me, you workers of lawlessness, because they, they bought into this cheap grace gospel, which tells them that they don't have to obey the Lord and they don't have to walk in, in holiness and faithfulness to him. And, and that's a lie. So just obey the Lord. Purify yourself as he is pure. Walk in righteousness and holiness. Make righteousness your practice. Don't make sin your practice. Love God. Love the children of God. And just follow Jesus with your lives. 